Um, I am going to try to put uh, working groups uh, into a context, actually, and uh, Monique also uh, added her experiences into this, so you can accept this as like past and future kind of thing. So to put everything, in, I mean, in working parties, let's say working groups, including the committees, into a context today, we need to see the general view as well. So why we need them, actually. Um, you know, the world is facing many difficulties, and archaeologists, as well as cultural heritage managers, museum uh, people, and historians are increasingly affected. Uh, they not only face decreasing funding for research uh, and at the same time experience an increasing pressure <coughs> to produce scholarship that is relevant for the you know, big questions of our uh, society. And if you think about the relationship between the current political situations and culture sectors, the EAA is one of the biggest organizations uh, responsible for approaching and handling various problems and issues, not only in Europe, but also in other parts of an increasingly um, globalized world. So these issues and problems range from regional to global conflicts to the destruction of cultural heritage assets or illicit trade of archaeological objects, uh, to name just a few here. But they also include the rapid technological innovations such as digital media and their use in archaeology or theoretical perspectives on new scientific methods such as you know, ancient DNA, isotopes and stuff. So they also include new ideas about and new technologies for preservation of the accumulated data and material recovered from sites, as well as new approach to open access on data, um, shared knowledge and so on. So um, the EAA should always be on the forefront of these discussions and the worldwide recognized uh, opinion uh, leader with the responsibility to reinvigorate ethical standards, I believe, in order to maintain a democratic environment in uh, European archaeology, the EAA promotes both inclusiveness and um, multivocality in these debates. So, and here are some numbers uh, about European archaeology and archaeologists uh, uh, according to the DISCO project, which was completed in 2014 in the 21 uh, participating European countries. An estimated 33,000 archaeologists are working across Europe. If we would add unemployed and freelance archaeologists, the number would even be much higher if we would include European countries which haven't been included in the studies or countries in, on the EU, admission lists such as Turkey, for instance, and if I give you an example, um, it is estimated that Turkey produces approximately 4,000 graduates in archaeology and art history each year, of which only 10, 20 might be able to get a job in their profession. Um, but from all these archaeologists, only approximately 2,000 to uh, 1,500 recently attend the conferences with the highest attendance, uh, actually, in the history of EAA, was is Istanbul 2014. Um, and we have about 1,200 uh, permanent members over the past years. Since 1995, 10,869 colleagues became our member. From the rough numbers, it becomes very clear that there is a huge number of European archaeologists who doesn't get involved or doesn't stay involved with the EAA. So how can we make the EAA more attractive for the former members to join again or, uh, more importantly, stay 
uh, in the EAA in the first place and uh, give them a space um, in the EAA to bring in and voice their concerns in and about uh, European archaeology. Surely, the annual meetings are providing a great opportunity to gather, present, and share uh, recent studies with colleagues discussing different perspectives under the themes which were prepared uh, by the scientific committee every year. Um, and fortunately, the number of members is increasing every year. Um, and the interest in EAA among archaeologists from all around the world is uh, growing. Therefore, the organization of the annual meetings has become more and more complex and complicated <coughs> with an ever-growing number of sessions and papers. Due to this uh, circumstance, important topics and discussions that require more time than we have at the annual meetings and uh, need other arrangements and accommodations and today and in the future. The EAA must create and offer a trusted network um, for its members and order, in order to exchange and discuss ideas and issues not only at the annual meetings but also between these meetings. This seems the only way to make the EAA uh, more active year-round and therefore more attractive for members from Europe and across the world, not just in the Europe. Um, oh, sorry. Um, the working parties and committees uh, were initially created uh, for uh, this very reason. And, and since 2000, 2001, they were thought to be a year-round activity. Ex exchange of ideas and discussions and sharing uh, the results of these discussions and activities at annual meetings with all EAA members at round tables and annual business meeting and in reports published in the TEA. Um, you, you see here a list with the current committees and working parties. Uh, these are the committees. Uh, well, these are the uh, most recent one, the existing ones. Uh, Committee on Archaeological Le Legislation and Organization. Committee on the Teaching and Training of Archaeologists. The Professional Associations in Archaeology Committee. Committee on Illicit Trade in Cultural uh, Material. And the uh, and these are the working parties, CAA and EAC, uh, Working Group on Farming, Forestry and Rural Land Management, Archaeology and Gender in Europe, uh, the EAA Working Group in Public Archaeology, Working Party Integrating the Management of Archaeological Heritage and Tourism, uh, Archaeology <coughs> and the EU Environmental Impact Assessment Directive, archaeological prospection. So we would like to take this um, actually opportunity to thank uh, all chairs and members uh, of these committees and working parties uh, very much for uh, their work and important contributions uh, to the EAA. Um, some working parties clearly had been extremely uh, active and gained uh, a huge uh, progress at the same time, we must also admit that the number of working parties and committees is continuously increasing, uh, which is a great thing, but after its first stage until now, it has become quite problematic to gather uh, data for the executive board to follow their activities. A lot of them didn't update their works or member status and to be able to report uh, the results of these very important foundations um, of the EAA to its members became more and more difficult in time. There was not much direct communi com communication uh, with the board. Uh, moreover, uh, there was little uh, connection with the other members uh, to these uh, activities. To avoid these problems, we have started to create an archive uh, and an activity log 
for all working parties and committees, as well as new guidelines um, for the establishment, renewal, uh, discontinuation <coughs> of them. Uh, there are also some issues to be thought from the other angle, and here uh, are some questions we should discuss in, in this table, in this round table. Uh, do all the working groups share their activities reports regularly with our members via TAA and Roundtable or ABM? Do they have enough time to collect feedback and comments from the members, especially at the two, three minutes uh, presentations at the annual business, uh, annual members business meetings? Um, is this a good format or what else we can do? Our working party and committees in cooperation with each other uh, in some of the shared topics. Um, do our members have easy access to the activities of, of uh, working groups? And what about non-members? How can they follow contents of working groups? Maybe they may be interested and they may join. Um, although there has been a great amount of work done in these working groups over the years, we are wondering whether the dissemination of access to and curation of the work could be better managed by the EAA. We learned that most of the working party chairs are not happy with the current presentation formats at the AMBM. And here, well, these are just, uh, you know, uh, some suggestions for the discussions. Maybe um, more dissemination of working parties and committees' results is needed. Um, extended functions of working group and committees' uh, results needed. Inclusion of non-members and students. An updated <coughs> new space, repository, discussion platform on EAA. Uh, website, IMIS, uh, and the usage of IMIS uh, is needed. Um, to achieve these goals and to render theme-based uh, <coughs> working groups to uh, be more active as uh, executive board, we feel that EAA needs to redefine this domain. And um, EAA members can be... <coughs> sorry. Uh, much more engaged and actively participating on various ways and feel free and confident in forming and getting <coughs> involved in communities. Also, these groups can, uh, for instance, advise and assist uh, the EAA board on some of the issues that uh, these committees address. And uh, just like EAA itself, <coughs> the content and extent uh, of these working groups need uh, renovation. Uh, but the first phase will be making these working groups to be visible and accessible uh, to the rest of the members. So IMS software will be used to support these uh, new uh, ways and uh, to open the way to make the working groups as a core and dynamic element of uh, the EAA. So these, uh, what you see here is not a layout or uh, of a web page or anything, but I was uh, thinking about that and uh, and uh, you know uh, still be formatted in a in the best way uh, we could but of course this is uh, in evaluation uh, in evolution in itself so I was thinking that we may have all these things uh, like uh, first an introduction part open uh, access for public so everybody can see these parts and it is also good uh, for executive board to follow uh, the, you know, uh, members' renewals and stuff. And uh, uh, also activities, some of them can be open. I mean, this is not that it should be, but this is just idea. Um, there can be all these kind of, I mean, I would like to see as... If, if I was outside of EAA, you know, if I was interested in just an you know, archaeologist, non-member of EAA, I would like to be um, impressed by these kind of web pages. It could take me in and I could play with it and then I can be interested in. Okay. 
it's finished. <laughs> um, okay, and I also thought some uh, sort of interactive stuff. Uh, like forum and uh, mentor service for junior uh, archaeologists for the proposals, projects, dissertations about the related topics maybe, and opportunities for participation in the projects about the related topic of the working party or committee. So con some conceptual changes are on the way uh, regarding to the engagement of more colleagues to the production of knowledge and incorporation to the EAA. You are already uh, informed about them briefly in relation to the IMS implication process, and which will be presented by Sylvie uh, in this round table. And uh, yeah, so thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.